Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Jada here and today we're talking about bottlenecks. Uh, all about bottlenecks. What is a bottleneck? Uh, what are specific examples of those in the game? And I'm going to try to go through a lot of bottlenecks you see from early game to mid game to late game. Which ones are going to go away and which ones are there forever. First I just want to talk about what actually is a bottleneck because it's talked about all the time. Some people might not have a firm grasp on the concept. So I have a crappy image here that I found on Google Images to help describe it. Uh, this is a bottle. This is the bottleneck. It's a very, it's a thin portion of the bottle, whereas a lot of things are fitting in the bottle. It's hard to get things out. So uh, for the swigga metaphor, these dots would be um, like characters trying to get use out of resources. And the resource limitation is uh, represented by the bottleneck. So if you have a bunch of characters you're trying to take to gear, another gear level and you're limited by Kyrotex, um, the limitation is how many chirotics you have. Maybe the thicker part of the bottle you're moving through faster because it's lower level gear, or maybe you don't need carbontes as much anymore. Uh, you're good on core gear, but then you're limited on chirotex, so they go through pretty quickly through a lot of the process, and then just get stuck on one. As you see, there's like f uh, three stacked up high here, two here, and then one here, and then they finally get out, and then they're on to the next bottle or part of the process, which might be like relics or something. Um, but that's what it is, just a limitation at one point in the chain. Now that we've talked about what a bottleneck actually is, a uh, metaphor applied to the game, we're going to talk about what some of the longest lasting and earliest starting bottlenecks are, starting with credits. Credits are a huge bottleneck, and I might not seem like I have a problem with them, and I don't right now. Um, but these are needed everywhere. To level up a character from 1 to 85, it costs over 8 million or six okay it's actually better than i thought it is six million credits 6.269 million credits it would take to take tarful up to level 85 um luckily i'm so late i'm at a point so late in the game where i'm not worried about that anymore but for an early game player like there's not many characters i have below 85 that is a huge bottleneck uh you can't progress your roster until you get more credits you might have the gear but then you're brought to a screeching halt and um, there's not too much you can do about it other than wait. Uh, one thing you probably should start doing, and I didn't know realize this when I made my peak efficiency shipments video, is they are selling credits in the uh, guild event store or guild activity store now for the tier one currency. Um, it would be like right here. And um, even at my point in the game, I'm using this for credits. However, if you're an early game player, you might need a lot of character shards, and those are great at the bottom, uh, only 200 apiece. But otherwise, you might want to buy some credits when you can, uh, but these are priority. You could get 30 shards for the cost of what, 1 million uh, credits. It's also in Squad Arena Store, but I don't really like this, especially for new players. You need to buy the character shards. So there's not much you can do about credits other than wait. They come in a variety of game modes like guild events. Um, not directly from raids anymore, but guild events, solo events. And the biggest solo event you can do to help your credits is the credit height event. So you're going to need five scoundrels to start doing this at its highest level. I think they might need to be five stars, six or seven. I don't know what it is for the stars. It might be seven stars. It might just be five stars. Um, it's been a while since I did it. But this doesn't have a set schedule. It comes every couple weeks or so. Here's the schedule on swigaevents.com. Uh, the last one was 13 days ago. Then there's a gap of 12. Uh, the biggest gap I'm seeing right here is 19. Oh no, 23. Uh, so it's sporadic, but you can get, on average, you get about 5 million credits from it. And it's just a simmed event, so it's very nice. Uh, you could get up to like 10 million credits from it. Uh, or like you could get 10 million per drop. That rarely, rarely ever happens. Most of the time you're getting like 5 million or 4 million. And that is a huge help for credits. A concurrent bottleneck that happens a little bit at the beginning of the game but quickly goes away is training droids. The reason it goes away is because training droids, um, you get them faster than credits a lot of times. So I have so many stocked up. I have 512,000 of the level one. Whenever you level them up, it defaults to the highest level ones first. Uh, so I'm using those first. I, I, I don't have any problem with this. Um, so you don't really have to worry about uh, training droids unless you're going hard on mods because to level up mods uh, costs credits. Uh, so you want to be selective with how you're upgrading your mods early on because the credits are very hard to come by. Um, so if we look at like a low level mod for me, 
it would cost uh, 250,000 credits to upgrade it. So you want to be careful with these. You want to be really selective. This would actually be a good one to level up because it does have speed and it's crit damage primary. Uh, but you want to be selective on those. Don't upgrade things without speed or good secondary stats. And that'll help out your credit bottleneck as well. So that was some of the bad news for newer players of what something is uh, bottleneck. That's not really going to go away. But when it is going to go away, and I know you feel it a lot in the early game, is stuff that you get from the challenge gear like this Mark VI Chewy Bob. Uh, these mark 5 computers those feel like a huge crunch uh, at your lower gear level uh, these mark 4 stun guns it might feel like these are harder to come by than the mark 5s for a little bit uh, but they are way easier to handle um, just by the time you get to level 85 I think they're not a bottleneck at all another one is this mark 4 computers seems really tight at the beginning the mark 4 droid colors seems really tight but by the time you start getting to these higher levels of the challenges uh you just start getting them kind of hand over fist and it's not a concern anymore so that is something to look forward to as a newer player next big gear bottleneck that you're going to feel for probably a long time as a newer player a mid game player all the way until you're an end game player um is like the core gear bottleneck uh, this is things like carbontes this used to be an unending problem but it's got fixed simply with one change they added this to the daily gear challenges so even beginner players might not be feeling the burn from this as much anymore uh, if, you, if you do feel the burn these are actually a great value um with the tier one raid currency and i know there's a lot of things competing to get that but you can buy it as needed if you do just even just one pit raid would be enough to get a full carbonti if you need it and that happens every three days i think even lower level guilds will be able to do the tank raid um so it's hard to imagine not having a ton of stuff uh this particular piece is i'm just drowning in it um i wouldn't buy it with shard store currency so that's something to avoid uh maybe guild store currency because you get 20 of them um if you're an early game player it's probably good use the tier one raid currency is still good don't put, buy them with crystals crystals are super expensive but this is something kind of all this core gear is mitigated to by the uh daily challenges but you do need to buy some as you go um stun cuffs as well stun cuffs stun gun no uh, stun cuffs stun guns carbontes they're all good buys in the shard shop and i yeah so this is a good buy. Uh, for me, I'm not going to buy it right now because I have 1323. I don't really need any more. But there's plenty of stores. Most of the time, they are worth it in a store. Um, unless it's crystals. Don't really waste crystals on these. But if you need some, there's plenty of good stores that have them. And then the holo projectors um, are kind of a similar thing. But you need like 20 of them per piece. So it's a little bit easier to deal with. These are things uh, you can actually buy for uh, crystals if you're in a pinch. Because... But... Uh, I probably would stay away from it if you can because your crystals are needed for refreshes. They're just cheap. You can get two of them for 300 or one of them for 150. That's actually a very good value. Uh, it's better than the other core gear. Uh, but this stuff does go away at some point. Uh, it's just going to take some time. And in the meantime, just buy the shipments if you need them. Another place you're going to get some of the core gear uh, is in territory battle rewards. So whether you do Hoth, GTB, or Rise of the Empire. Also, territory war. Oh, you're going to get some drops. And then from Grand Arena prizes. Uh, depends what league you're in. Uh, but in the end of season... Or no, the, not the end of season rewards. End of event rewards. You're going to get a decent bit. Uh, so this is Kyber 1. This is not indicative of what everyone's going to get. But you get some here. Like you might get a few. But it, it's not it's not a huge impact on it. Like back before they added this to the challenges this might have seemed like a bigger deal but now it's just like a little add on there i want to start talking about some ability materials starting with uh this tier three ability material um it seems like at the beginning of the game it seems like it's a bottleneck that's never going to go away but i promise you it will i have nine thousand. um this just stacks up to the moon you can get it in cantina battles mainly uh, i don't know if it's in every cantina battle but it's just going to happen over time. Like, don't sweat it. Just be choosy with them at first. It's going to start piling up. And eventually, your biggest bottleneck, or your bigger bottleneck, will be the Omegas. Which just doesn't really go away completely. Um, you could buy it with a tier 1. But I don't know if you want to do that. Don't buy it with a fleet currency. It comes in the ship ability materials. Um, and these random Omega battles. 
Uh, but you do get them over time. You can get them in Cantina Drops as well later on. Uh, but it, don't, don't worry about it. It's going to alleviate at some point. Uh, and then your bigger problem will be Zetas. We move on to our first bottleneck that is an enormous bottleneck both at the beginning of the game and towards the end of the game. Uh, end game players right now might tell me it is not a big bottleneck. They have tons stocked up. But if you are not an end game player right now, this will always be a problem for you. You're never going to catch up. Uh, but So you just need to be wise with how you apply your Zeta mats. Um, they come from a, a bunch of different places. The most reliable place is this ship ability materials challenge. Happens three times a week. Uh, so a as long as you qualify for tier three with the Executrix and some uh, tier six ships, or uh, like five star ships or six star ships, uh, you're gonna be able to start getting those reliably. You also get some once in a while from events like the Night Sisters event, the Ewoks event. You get some of them from Grand Arena. Um, you can buy them with fleet currency. Um, although I, I still recommend getting characters you need prior to getting buying Zeta mats because for 2000 like it it takes 20 Zeta mats to do a full ability so that's 40,000 uh fleet arena currency and for 40,000 fleet arena currency you could buy 100 shipments of characters which is a thousand character shards and it's three full characters um so yeah just be choosy when you start doing that but that is a common way to buy Zetas later in the game you also get a few from Territory War, which doesn't happen. It happens like four times in a month or four times in a four week period. Uh, if you win, you get three at a certain GP level. If you lose, you get two. So you're going to get some from there no matter what. But just winning there and winning Grand Arena uh, can help you get Zetas a little bit faster. But it's just something it's slow. You can't really speed it up. You could buy things in packs when they come along, but that's not something I ever do. So it's really just a long haul problem with the Zetas. So be very sparing with how you apply them. And since I talked about Zetas, I'll just skip forward to a super end game bottleneck. Uh, it's also a beginning game bottleneck, but you're not like dying for them as much in the beginning game. It's Omicron materials. This is a step above Zeta. It works only in specific uh, only in specific game modes, and it says right here where you get them. Collect challenges, collect conquest, and cantina battles. You can also buy the summon packs, and there's summon shipments. But the best way is just to collect the challenges. Uh, you only need to get this tier 8 crate, which isn't too many key cards, um, to get two of them. So you're going to stock them up over time that way. Uh, well, I mean, it's second to last, so that is hard to get. But you can start getting at least one in the tier 5. Or tier three in the tier four crate, so it's only 30 key cards. So if you can, just do the best you can to get at least that crate. Try to get tier eight to get these Omicrons. Um, one place that it's terrible to buy them in, and I would never recommend it, is in this guild event store for tier three currency. It pops up. Is it in the weekly shipments? Maybe. Um, but it's like three thousand, yeah, three thousand seven hundred fifty for this for one. Don't do that. Like you can get so many Cairo packs or whatever you need um, exclusive character shards for this. This would cost how many? Like seventy five thousand. Get three to, uh, currency to get one full Omicron material or uh, ability. It's just not worth it. Just a tear. It's a terrible bottleneck. Uh, so it'd be wise with how you apply them because it's not really speeding up, and I don't know if it will anytime soon. And yeah, you get the Omicrons from the single data nodes, which is nice because you have to farm these a lot, but it's very rare. However, one time I did get two drops in one sim, which was like, I just simmed like 10 times and got it. So you can get it. So you can see why I wouldn't want to use 3,750 get three currency for this, because if you can get it from just one lucky sim, it's like, how can I give up that much currency for one? I was hoping to talk about Relic Bottlenecks today, but this video is getting a little long for what it is. So I'm going to talk about Kyrotex, and that's the last thing that will wrap up kind of uh, the early earlier game gear bottlenecks before gear 12. And I'll do another video later on gear 12 bottlenecks and relics. Uh, so the Kyrotex, you need them before gear 12, but that's it's the one type of gear that's a problem even for end game players. I have 533 of this type right now, a few new characters, and I'm going to be wiped out, or a few gear 13s, I'm going to close to the end. Um, but I would just recommend hitting these with almost every currency you can, the exception being raid currency. 
Uh, guild event currency, if you can spare it, if you don't need any of these um, characters, not trying to catch up on them, buy the Kyrotex. I do this every time. I buy exclusively with Get 3 at this point. I buy exclusively with Get 2 at this point. Um, moved away from the Gear 12 Plus pieces. And I buy exclusively with Grand Arena currency. Uh, so that all adds up to, I have 800 of this now. That is great with these currencies. Um, you don't have it in shard shop. You, it's available in guild activity uh, with the new raid tokens, but do not do it. It is awful value. Um, did I pass it? It's like thousands for just a few pieces. Uh, if I can find it at some point. Uh, but yeah, do that. And there's one node you can hit all the time. Ah, whatever. It's not in there. Don't buy it in the uh, raid currency. I don't know if I missed it. Otherwise, what I'm always hitting is light side 7b so if you have if you have to be choosy you don't have a lot of um guild event tokens uh buy the computer type uh uh Kyrotech with the currencies and then farm this node this is an amazing node you get this is helpful for relics i'll we'll talk about that in a later video uh but this node is fantastic um the the node for the the dark side for the computer one's not as good so you want to focus on this node for kairos that's all the advice I have. Early game bottlenecks. Uh, don't let them get you down. It happens to everybody. Uh, and in another video later, keep an eye out for Gear 12, Gear 12 Plus, and Relic Materials. Just more end game bottlenecks. That I'll cover in a later video. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like if you did enjoy the video and subscribe if you have not already. I'll see you guys later.